So today I'm going to talk about ChatGPT, which I really like because it's made my life a whole lot easier. Um, and I'd love for this to be an interactive class. Um, so what are some things that you guys find that you struggle with in your business, either creatively or just it's too time consuming and it's just not worth your time? My description's on my list. Okay. Yeah. What well, I was thinking. My description on of my of my myself on the web on my website. Okay. Okay. What else? What about creating a smart plan? Oh yes. Oh yeah. Well, we're supposed to have an admin to do that, but <laughs> but if but you're I only a single to... agent and not to yeah. an admin level yet, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so no, does your admin have, have trouble? Smart yeah, because she doesn't know what to say. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. What about um, who's doing buyer seminars? Who wants to do a buyer seminar but doesn't know what to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. So let's say questions for buyer. What else? Okay, cool. That's a really good start. So what I like about ChatGPT is you can start really big and then really narrow it in. Um, I think it's important to know about artificial intelligence is that it's not going to substitute for like what's in between your ears. Um, so anything that it spits out, you definitely need to proofread. Um, a lot of it will contain the occasional fair housing violation of the book. Oh, great schools. Well, we know we can't see you know, family friendly, we can't say that either. Um, so we want to make sure that we are being compliant and protecting ourselves. Um, also, some of it sounds like super canned, um, but it's a really great starting point when you don't always know where to begin. Um, so this, going really cool. Um, does anybody have any specific questions before? We get started. Do you want me to hit on? Okay. If you guys think of anything as I'm going, just let me know. Um, so, Chat GPT. There's a bunch of different AI options. I use Chat GPT. It's just the one that I'm most familiar with. Um, they have two versions. They have a free version and a paid version. I use the free version, um, and you kind of have an option. You can sign up with your own account or through your Gmail. And then it gives you a few little disclaimers. So it says our goal is to get feedback to improve our systems. And while they have safeguards in place, the system may occasionally generate incorrect or misleading information. And it may produce offensive or biased con con content. Excuse me. Um, so they do review and save your conversations. Um, so on the side of the screen, you'll be able to see like things that have happened um, that I've like searched for in the past. It also says don't share any sensitive information. And then it's, you know, for dialogue. Um, so who has a listing coming up that we can use? Stephanie. How did you get to the screen? Sorry. Oh, no, that's a great question. Okay, so you can either Google. So I have it on open AI. Is that the same thing? That is it. So you can Google chat GPT okay. or you can do open.ai or open AI. And then it'll bring you to where you want to go. And then you'll just go to chat GPT. When it first came out, it was super congested. And you, a lot of times you wouldn't be able to log on and you'd have to like wait in a queue. Um, it's not quite as like full since then. Where do you log in? And it says try chat GPT. Stephanie, what's your listing? It's 1385 Chatly. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, way. Okay. So what we're going to do, so at the very bottom of the screen, you'll be able to see up here. So I typed in the address, but I'm going to put in a little bit more information. Uh, two T's. 
No, so, no, it's one T, but I can't see. Oh, let me see if I can make it. Yeah, it, well, it's actually so the, is it it seems like the brightness is their way to make it. Yeah, is that, that does help. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so okay. I did Much log better. in. All I right. don't know why it's not. So we're going to start and just say write real estate listing description for tell me about the house. Um, it is about 1,700 square feet, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Anything that stands out about it? Is it recently updated? Um, uh, there is a, a new master bath. Okay, what else? Um, Other than that, is the house dated? Uh, yeah. Um, and then they have like, they, they have new uh, systems okay. and new windows and things. So they did that kind of stuff. Cosmetic. Okay. Not roof. Oh. HVAC, hot water heater and windows. Okay. And then I'm going to say, right in 100 words or less okay so i just said write real estate listing description for address it's a three two new primary bathroom rest of the home is dated new h back of windows write 100 words or less we're going to hit enter and then you no longer have the honey stop the car right <laughs> so Sometimes you have to relook at it and you have to say, okay, hold on. This doesn't sound like me. This sounds terrible. So then you're going to say, right in fun vibe. And then it'll change the way that it writes it. Right? Yeah. So it's a good starting point. Uh -huh. It's not always going to be your voice. Because right. It's the internet. Um, but you'll be able to see like bits and pieces that you can take from it. Copy and paste. Exactly. And then tweak it so that it's more, you know, um, let's say write like Chip and Joanna Gates. Huh. You're right. It's about to talk about sweet tea, probably. Uh, Lots of potential. Ship left. Subway turn off. Farmhouse. Same. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great start yeah you know and yeah, you can sure. kind of gear it towards like who are you looking at working with right like who's the potential buyer for this house right what is it the green one or the blue one because the blue one says it's hey. not an app it's a website oh it's, okay gotcha because i know it's the secret that you think it's an app yeah it not. should be an app but it's right now it's just a website as far as i know okay. um i'm sure once they're out of the right. research preview they're going to probably develop it out so you're um, giving it instructions how to write it. You can say, I want it in a funny way. I want it whatever I right. really want it. Is yeah. that what you're doing? And then you can also just say, write listing description for address. Or for a specific address. All right, let's scroll back down. Oh, it's pulling from what I already told them with the HVAC and uh -huh. windows. Um, but if you start from scratch, then it really just pulls from tax records. You can also look at past listing descriptions mm -hmm. and have them rewrite it. Of the same listing or mm -hmm. different listing? Same listing. Um, or a different one in the neighborhood. Um, Uh, the right in 100 words or less is key because I just said right listing description. Oh, it's it'll like write really long. <laughs> six or seven paragraphs. Still going. I'm like, wow. I'm and then that's when it's really important to be like, instead of where we regener regenerate response, you'll say stop. <laughs> um, rewrite listing description for real estate. I don't know if you have to <clears throat> specify for real estate or not. I always do. Um, 
Experience a blend of modern convenience and classic charm in this beautiful three bed, two, two and a half bathroom home. Boasting updates throughout the home it features gleaming hardwoods on the main floor as well as granite countertops and stainless steel in the kitchen. Same. So you get the drift. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some of the listings I've read lately have been using this gleaming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and then, you know, you can say like, rewrite like this or, you know, use these adjectives, you know, um, you can be as specific or, you know, vague as you would like. Um, so we're going to go. Okay, so as we know, graduation is coming up. Um, so I'm terrible at writing graduation. Um, congratulations, like cards. Um, graduation. Congrats. So we'll just say high school graduations. Congrats. And we'll say 50 words or less. And so this is going to be a really generic one. Just says, congrats on your high school graduation. This is a major accomplishment and marks the beginning of a new chapter in your life. Whether you're headed to college, starting a career, pursuing other dreams, remember to stay true to yourself and keep pushing towards your goal. And then I did one for somebody else, for um, my friend's daughter. And this was like a letter to her. Um, but I was very like specific. I said, write heartfelt letter to a high school graduate. I have known her since she was three years old and she's grown up to be an extraordinary human. And then I gave some adjectives to describe her. And then it just made it sound so much better than I could ever make it. Um, so this will help a lot with like thank you notes. So like say you're door knocking and you want to write a thank you note to the neighbors, but this is, you know, you're not used to writing those. It's a great way to start. Um, Okay, so let's do the self description. Right. What would that be called? Um, bio. Like a bio. For, is this for your website? Yeah. You can find websites before. Okay. Yeah, it's like I've been in the business for this. This is what I do. This is what I don't do. Puts clients first. Awesome person. We're just going to put a few things. And then there you go. Wow. Isn't that incredible. And then, really, what it does is it's going to pull from like kind of I don't want to say like generic, like top producer terms, but it's like you're hardworking, you understand that buying or selling is an emotional and stressful process. You're able to have strong negotiation skills and in depth knowledge of the real estate market, you know, things that your clients would say about you, but you may not necessarily say about yourself. Um, you know, and then if something's like completely, you know, like you don't want to talk about like any relevant awards or achievements you can just delete that part right like you don't want to say oh i'm an atlanta top producer you know top five percent blah, blah blah alc you don't want to say those things you can just take those in itself um and then you can also something i like to do too is um do blog posts um so write blog post or out of state buyers moving to Metro Atlanta in summer 2023. Does this make sense to everybody? Does anybody have oh, any yeah. questions that have? That's incredible that he can write that blog post. No. And sometimes it thinks a little bit. Um, and that's okay. Well, now, did you find that the more specific you are, um, let's say you want to write a blog post about buyers are moving to Atlanta with luxury homes, just yeah. uh, you see, so I'm narrowing the pod mm -hmm. and they want to move to Midtown. Right. Okay. Do you find 
when you use the the more specific you are, the the I would say the better it is or not. Yes. And so this is going to be like you're just thinking about moving. Let's see, it's like population over six million. And now I'm going to say rewrite for luxury, luxury, Midtown, Atlanta, buyers who enjoy, let's say the Beltline, Beltline and Piedmont, that's where I can write, Park. And sometimes that'll happen like you'll you'll type something in and then you'll start reading what they're writing and then you're like that is not the direction I wanted to go. I wanted to be more luxury or I wanted to be more first time home buyer or people downsizing. Um, yeah, and then you can just stop generating and say rewrite for this demographic So this demographic. Yeah. Um, and then now it's talking about the Beltline, it's talking about Piedmont Park, um, you know, things that we know about these areas that but AI may not know or may not really see the draw as much. Right. Um, so yeah, you can see, I mean, it's going, it's got a lot. Um, and you can also tell it, like, can you tell it, like, don't make it more than three paragraphs, right? Yeah. Exactly. And so normally for listing descriptions, I'll do about 100 words, um, whatever your like ideal would be, right. you could do that. But then blog posts, they could be a little bit longer. Um, you can also see about linking like your affiliate, like moving company to it. Um, stuff like that. And then um, what about like design or pictures? If you ask it to put some pictures in it, would it put pictures in it? I don't know. Let's try I have not done that before. That would be super cool. Generate. I know there are AI that do that. Um, I'm not sure if Chat GPT is for that. It's probably a paid service. Um, photo for blog. See what it says. I'm sorry. As an AI language model, I can't do that. Okay. So no, you'll have to go to another website for that. Um, something else you could do too uh, is so as we know social media is like really you know kind of forefront for a lot of people right now. Um, so you can come up with ideas for TikTok, you can come up with ideas for Reels, and you can come up with ideas for Facebook. And I find that it's really important that you differentiate between those because if you just say create social media calendar for this, you know, um, Facebook is going to have a different algorithm than TikTok. And reels are also going to probably look different than TikToks too. Um, so you can say create real um, create social media <coughs> calendar for June and Atlanta. So they create the wording for you. That's what you're saying. And reels. Well, it'll come up with a social media calendar for you. What do you mean by social media yeah, calendar? calendar? So it's cut, it's giving you prompts to use. So um, week uh -oh. one, June one through fifth, you're going to share a post on the top five luxury homes in, in Midtown. And then for reels, they're going to create a quick tour of a high rise luxury condo. The next week, benefits of working with a local real estate agent like ourselves for luxury property, and then share a virtual tour. Um, it's even giving like specific neighborhoods too, like Virginia Highlands, Angeli Park, um, Inman Park. And then this is also going off of my previous luxury blog post. So if you're social media calendar is going to be unrelated, I would suggest starting a new chat over here, okay? Um, otherwise, it's going to keep 
playing off of what you are already doing. So move from here. So that almost sounds like a smart plan for social media. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, really it does. How did you start that conversation? Well, it does. Create a, a calendar. Oh, yes. For Create social a social media, media calendar for calendar. June. In Atlanta, real estate include Facebook and Reels. I didn't say TikTok, but we could do TikTok too. Got it. Um, so let's do smart plan. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to create a new chat, create smart plan. I need this one actually. So I'm going to do one for myself um, for first time home buyers with credit issues, six month time frame. Use call, text, and email with, um, let's say, conversation prompts. So then it's going to give you month one, here's your three. And then you can even say, break it down by week. So we're gonna do that now. Break down by week. Weekly touch. Let's see, so it has all six months. And then now week one, week two week three. And so this is where it would be great to have like a cyber backer and admin put this in the command for you with right. the prompts. That way you are not using your 20% or 80% right. stuff, you know, and I think that's what like AI has given me back is like all the time that I spend on like this 80% nonsense that like we're supposed to be leveraging out. This has created the leverage and it's oh, yeah. free. Now would you do one that says write email about educationing about wait write email to educate buyers about credit. Now you've written week one email right. Mm -hmm. And then you can even link in here at some point like the supreme credit repair Friday zoom. Um, you can link in your preferred lenders information too. Um, just by tweaking it or editing it. Um, and what's really nice is so say, you know, I want to go back and look at, you know, I had a buyer from the open from Stephanie's open house right in Woodstock. So I can go back and see oh yeah this is that open house that I did. It saves everything. So it's like here's a funny social media birthday post their jokes are terrible. Um, <laughs> they're really bad. Um, but even like happy home anniversary, right? It's been X number of years since you found the perfect home. Um, thank you and referrals. So Amanda, yeah. are you creating an account for yourself in this chat GPT and we're saving everything that we're yes. doing? So chat GPT says openai.com mm -hmm. and then you're gonna go to try chat GPT yeah. and then well, I'm already logged in. Um, but There's then it'll prompt you to create an account. Login and sign up, yeah. oh that's yeah. where it comes from. And then we create it. Yeah. And then, you know, like I said earlier, I mean, that's my, this is my disclaimer, like, Anything if you put in here and anything it spits out at you, proofread it. You know, because we want to make sure that we are being compliant, yeah. that we're not creating any fair housing violations. Even like the term master bedroom, master bathroom, it's on its way out, right? Like we're now shifting to primary bathroom, on our primary bedroom, ensuite bathroom. So we really want to make sure that like we are using inclusive language uh, just to appeal to the broadest audience possible. Why master? Why master is going out? Um, it's just it's going to primary. It's not as yeah. inclusive. Oh, it um, yeah. So. Um, Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, so we just want to make sure that we're appealing to the broadest, you know, especially with blog posts and stuff. Like we don't know where they're going to get shared, if our vendors are going to share them, who their clients are. So. Um, yeah. Okay. What else? 
Would it give you stats? Like if you take Ooh, that's a great Oh, you know what I did? I took the stats from MMO and I put it in that. Oh my god, I almost died what it did to this. Good or bad? Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you can put in graphs, but I put in the wording. Okay. We're gonna do I haven't done this yet. Um should I list? We're just going to keep using Stephanie's listing. Woodstock. Four in June 2023. Yeah, June 2023. So here's the nice thing. So it does not have access to real time market data, right? So it is not going to take our jobs. It defers back to us, which I really like. So it says, I said, how much should I list this house in Woodstock for? And it's like, I can't tell you, and I can't predict, predict the real estate trends, right? So it's not going to tell us when the market's going to crash. It's not going to tell us when it's at its peak. Um, but it says, research the market, consider the property conditions, consult a real estate agent, have them do a CMA, and consider your timelines and goals. Um, and I think those are also things that we can shift into you know, a blog post on, hey, are you thinking about selling your house? These are things that we need to look at. You know, this is why I can help. Sorry, what else? I think the only thing that bothers me is, I mean, it's not, but I, I can see what you're saying because it gives you just the basic, yeah. like, and then you have to take it and do something with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I find it for the smart plans or like the touch follow ups. Yeah, it's just enough information, you know, that I'm like, oh, I can just take this and then hit it week by week. Um, and then you can say, write my email, you know, and then send out that email. Um, so for the smart plan, did you say when you started to do that smart plan, did you say how many touches you you're going to do or? So the one that I just did, it was um, six months, and then oh, I said break it down week by week. Got it. Um, and so then it gave three touches. It gave um, call, text, and email for each week. For each week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it wrote the first email for me, which is huge. Yeah. Yeah. First email is like. So the first email was interesting, was introduction to who you are? No, so <laughs> this would have been after the first phone call when they got to know you, and then after your first text, and this just says, this is, I want to educate you a little bit more on credit scores, because this was based off of the credit smart plan. Right. And you can also tell it, I would assume, hey, I need it like in two sentences or three sentences yep. short. Ray right and three sentences. Mm -hmm. Well, that was just explaining the email, but whatever. Um, but yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. All right, and then um, so let's do fire question. Um, create first time home buyer seminar for real estate agent. in East Chicago. And of course, you're not going to like read this, but this is a really good like kind of breakdown. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So what would have taken me an hour Hours. to just come up with the timeline? Oh, yeah. And then I would have tweaked it 17 times. Mm -hmm. I already got it. Um, and now it's just finding what points to put in where, you know, or like what data, right. what, yeah. Right. 
Um, but I know for like a lot of us, I feel like we're really good at talking to people, you know, that's why we're in real estate. Um, so it's like once we get flowing, then it just kind of comes naturally. Carrie, you used chat GPT before. What else have you used it for? A little bit. Um, on, just on listings so far. God. I really don't. And most of my other stuff is already written. So I haven't had an opportunity to. Okay, what would you use chat GPT for? To be honest with you, checking everything in magazines and it depends uh, what kind of property I'm going to list. Mm -hmm. And I always ask the seller what is the the most the, the highest uh highest um things that they like when they purchase this property and mm -hmm. what the experience living in this property. So I took those those uh, words and uh, implement them to one. Okay, cool. Try to, yes. And uh, mm -hmm. also what I just recently learned that sometimes uh, it's not, in my experience, it's not really good trying to sell the property, telling the buyer or the prospect that there is a three bedrooms, two baths, la, 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 la. I said, okay, the property, if it's the property is in a very good condition, Mm -hmm. What I am concentrated is in the area, in what yeah. that area can offers to the new pros, um, excuse me, new prospects or new buyers. Yeah. So why don't we do this? Let's sell a house in the Marietta Square. Mm -hmm. So write listing description for home. In Marietta Square, talk about the area and what it has to offer. So you can just get rid of that first set, like that first uh, paragraph. And then it's going to talk all about the Marianne Square. This is great. You know, I, it, it took me like and you didn't have to do any research. hours to, to get your yeah, like uh, to write. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, some uh, some lines only, and this one is like acting like yeah, I love it. They're reading their mind. They're reading our mind. Right. <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah. No, and you don't have to do any scary. research on the area. It is scary. No, it's You're just scary. like, oh yeah, I remember this. You uh -huh. know. Uh, like I was in high school writing papers. Woo! No, they have they have uh, oh, yeah. an app Actually, where they can find out if you've been watching and all of a sudden they're yeah. putting marks and they're calling parents. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just talked to some like Even two friends about that. Yeah, they're like going back to you. So they have like, when you write essays and things like that, they have already got an app which is uh, which comes first. They know if they have taken from ChatGPT and they're calling parents to say that and they're cutting marks already. I just want to be fourteen again and we and that's like a really good like point is that right now this is not copyrighted information, right? But does that mean that chat GPT is never going to copyright their mm -hmm. own stuff and then we can never use blog posts from, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the future holds for yeah, it, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important that like we just kind of keep up with it and just like see what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, right now, like with schools, it's like they have plagiarism, yes. like mm -hmm. chat GPT filters. Um, and I mean, that could happen later on too. So but. there's actually a program that filters yeah. to see yes. if it can Yeah, from teachers, will, teachers. Teachers even, will check now and they'll call you out. Even for job uh, applications. I mean, it wouldn't sound like you, so it's No, like, yeah. Uh, uh, anti uh -huh. GPD. <laughs> there's a case going on with doctors too. Wow. All right. So, what else? Oh, this is amazing. I don't know. I, I told okay, everyone, I was like, it's probably not going to take an hour because it's. Yeah, you have to process what you just. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've played with that, but it's. Yeah. And the really nice thing about it, too, is it saves all of your stuff, right? So, like, say, so I'm doing like wedding shows next year. And I was like, create follow up plan for newlyweds, create, you know, touch plan, like a monthly touch plan for right. them, um, all the way up until the wedding. You know, and then it created blog posts, it created emails, um, you know, just 
things where I was like, I don't even know where to like start. Like, how do you capture such a cold lead? Uh, because it's like, a, you know, you just get everybody's email. Uh, and so then it took it and it made it not so difficult and not so like, like a mountain, you know, um, it just became something where it was a lot easier. Um, so what I noticed, I wonder, because this is really more of, let's say whatever we just spit up right now is more information, but wasn't a call to action. If you yeah, try to it. tell it, call to action. Okay, give me a call to action. Um, do first time home buyers, but that, you know, we use the word call to action, which you know what it is, yeah. right? They know what so, a smart plan is, I imagine they know what a call to action is. Yeah. I'm sorry? I said that if they know what a smart plan is, I bet they know what a call to action is. Well, that's what we want to see. Yeah. First time home buyers, call to action. You didn't put smart plan, did you? Or mm -hmm. action? What did you put in before? Action plan or emails? Okay, so I'm just gonna say best way to get first time homebuyers to or just to call me for real estate. Okay, that's not what I want. Mm -hmm. Um, for for first time buyer. Let's see if it knows what a mofer is. Okay. So does everybody in here know what a mofer is? No. Make offer for immediate response. Oh. So I'm, you know, getting free CMA free, you know, home buyer seminar. Um, you're providing some sort of item of value. It's something that gets them to reach out to you, which is the call to action, you know, that Shelly's talking about. Um, call to action for first time home buyer. Good call to realtor. Yeah. Here's some examples. Ready to take the first steps towards home ownership? Call me today and schedule a consult. That is amazing. Stop renting, start owning. Call me now to learn how to make your home ownership dreams a reality. Yeah. What did you say? What, what did you, you instruct it again? So I said, call to action for first time home buyer to call realtor. Because the first time what I did was I said, best way to get first time home buyers to call me for real estate needs. And then it came up with almost like a marketing plan. So I just stopped generating because I was like, that's not what I want. And then I didn't know what to make offer for immediate response a mofer is. Um, so then I just typed in call to action. Okay. So you're saying we can take all this information, put it in a smart plan, and then we can add as an opportunity and send it to a client if we have to. Yeah, absolutely. You can even just copy and paste, say, ready to take a first step to your copy. Paste it on your social media, put a pretty picture with it. Or, you know, right now it's like big about like telling stories, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're telling a story about, you know, your first time home buyers, they've been renting, they didn't know that they could buy. Um, but because of you, it made it, you made it possible, right? And like now they own their own home, they're happy now, you know, they no longer, they can get a dog and paint their walls, you know? And you say, do you want to paint your walls and get a dog? Are you ready to take the first step? Mm -hmm. Call me. You know, call me for a consultation. Mm -hmm. Right? So right now we want to be telling stories about our clients. And we want to talk about, like, what was our motivation for buying? Like, what was our motivation for selling? Um, what was the process like for them? Like, were there any hiccups along the way? How did you overcome those hiccups? Um, because it puts like having them do a video call or a video like review for you is a lot more impactful than them just writing you a review. Because it puts a face and a personality to like what you're doing, you know? And then it makes somebody think, oh, I really, I thought it was a terrible market. 
Fox News said it was a terrible time to buy. You know, CNN said it was a terrible time to sell. Like, whatever my news outlet is told me not to do this, but like, these are people doing it. They got closing costs. They got the house of their dreams. Their interest rate's only like 5.99. It's not that bad, you know? Like, what's going to motivate somebody to get rid of a 3% interest rate, right? Pain. Pain is the only thing that's going to motivate them enough to get them to triple their monthly payment. Because they're going up in price point and interest. You know, and so you've got to hit on the pain and then the solution. Right? And then you end it with a... I'm over. Make offer for immediate response. Okay. But if you do a offer, it's the same as as call to action, isn't yeah, it? It is. Yeah. Yeah, they're interchangeable. Mofer just sounds funnier. <laughs> Amani, have you played around with ChatGPT at all? I've been doing it um, now. And I put in like I tried to do the same thing like smart plan for past clients real estate three months with the call text and email and it broke it down like for by week removal mm -hmm. and then just to see what it said I like wanted to I told it to create an Instagram post for National Cat Day and it had like a whole well it had a few paragraphs and then I told it to rewrite it in a couple sentences yeah and it has like the hashtags and the emojis and all that stuff there too. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Nice. What did you do? Say it again. I said create an Instagram post for like National Cat Day and then it just like put in the description, put in like all these different emojis, pulled up some hashtags for the end of it and did all the spacing, which I like because a lot of times when you're on Instagram, it's hard to like put spaces in between your sentences. Um, but yeah, it was nice. Yeah. And what did you write in National Cat Day? Sell? <coughs> what does that say? So I just said write an Instagram post for National Cat Day with emojis and hashtags. Okay. Yeah. Do we know that ChatGPT hasn't spit out like mine when you did it? Is your post very similar to that one? Mine is a bit different because I didn't say to put emojis and hashtags in it and it's like a bit more spaced out. I see it's a longer, yeah. Yeah, and it's a bit longer than what she has up there. And it does have like a couple of the same hashtags, but it added some more hashtags to it yeah. as well. What's a good real estate related Instagram post? Um maybe like why don't we do like summer maintenance? Yeah, like pictures. It won't do no. pictures, it will do um, emojis. Okay. Yeah. Look, and I'm going to completely butcher this word, and that's fine. And it's still going to know what I'm talking about. <coughs> we write with. No, I mean, I think that's actually good. So you got a little burger emoji, you got a little flower tree. You got that. Thumbs up. So why don't we do write email with top summer maintenance. I really just don't know how to spell maintenance, apparently. That's fine. For home owners. All right. And here's our emails. Here's our June touch via email. Mm -hmm. Check your roof, service your HVAC, clean your gutters, check your windows and doors. And you know what? Maybe I can call my HVAC guy and get him to give me a coupon that I can send out to my clients, you know, and say, hey, you know, if you use ABC HVAC, you know, you get a twenty dollar off coupon on your seasonal maintenance, um, and that's a way to like also add like an item of value, but also plug your vendor that you like know and you love and you trust. Can we tag them in this? 
Mm-hmm. Can we tag the vendors in this? So when we you would put this in your email. You would copy and paste this into your email. And within BCCD. And, and then you would um, just have to like put their information in. So you could copy paste like a coupon mm-hmm. into like if you have like a PDF or um, like a, a um, JPEG, like depending on the file. You can just copy and paste like the picture into your email um, and literally just put it almost like an advertisement right underneath service or HVAC. Check your roof. And then you can say, here's roof it forward. We love them. Mm. You know, they'll come out and do a free roof inspection or perimeter roofing or whoever you use, you know. Um, and then also at the end, you can always say, like, if you don't know who to call, call me. I've got people, you know. Because say you have clients that are in Gwinnett, you know, and your HVAC night only services polling, mm-hmm. you know, you can find somebody out in Gwinnett that's like a value, uh, like a good person to like use. Um, and someone who's not just going to like take advantage of it, you know, even if you're just calling the other KW out there, yeah. who's your preferred vendor? You know, mm-hmm. who's on your list? KW you Gwinnett. And they'll say, oh, it's. Yeah. I like the coupon idea. I think the yeah. coupon is great. Yeah. So what did you type in over here? June thingy. What did you do? Oh, I just said write email with top summer maintenance top summer. for homeowners. Okay. And you can even write an email too of like write email for fun things to do in Woodstock, Georgia this summer. So a little bit it's generic, right? It's like, go walk the trails. But then it's like, Woodstock Summer Concert Series is back this year. And you can link to it in your email, right? Uh, visit a farmer's market. You can link to the farmer's market or to their Facebook page, you know? Um, yeah. I wonder if you put on a... Um, what was the subject of this email? This one was fun things to do in Woodstock this summer. How about fun things to do in Woodstock next week? Okay. Let's see what happens. Basically, what would you would ask for to from Google, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, hold on. So movie night, apparently they are doing Trolls World Tour at Northside Cherokee Amphitheater, which I had no idea about. And then you've got the generic farmer's market, try a new restaurant, here's a few plugs. Here's a very specific yoga studio. Yeah, you better read that. Uh-huh. Yeah. You might want to double check too and make sure like these are like actual places. Um, unless of course you're already familiar with like, you know, yeah. Them. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if I like that just yeah. because it doesn't have like pictures, you know, people like pictures. Yeah. You have to like just pull pictures from their website. Yeah. Because yeah. so that's, that's what I normally do. Yeah. Um, and then I link like I like like the actual place in the email as well. Let's see. <clears throat> but legally, I mean, can we use uh, pictures from the website even though they have no our pictures? No, no right. Well, if you're just plugging the website. The, yeah, you can go to like one of those generic mm-hmm. places and like put some people like watching a movie, yeah. like on Unsplash or something where they have like the free things. Right. And then you can like link the oh. actual place to it. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Right. But yeah, so 
Yeah, Google me. I think this is better just like for this group. Yeah. But even if you weren't like as specific as like, what are we doing next week? You know, right. it's like, it just came up with, you know, I don't know this one. It just came up with all the summer maintenance tips and I don't have to think about any of them, you know? Um, and it'll do it for every single season. So you can go ahead and take like a couple hours one week and literally put out your monthly email for the rest of the year just by using ChatGPT. And something you can do too is, I mean, I would probably check them, right? Because like, say, you know, the bottom falls out in September, right? And you have an email saying how wonderful the market is, right? And it's not, and hypothetically, knock on wood, this isn't gonna happen, but you know, something crazy happens. You wanna make sure that it's on par with like the temperature of the market, the temperature of social like situations, um, you know, because heaven forbid something else happens in Ukraine, right? You don't want to send some light, fluffy post. You want to be like cognizant of like your tone. So, um, you may not want to send Happy Cat Day on 9 11, right? Exactly. Like, it's toned down. Um, but yeah. Cool. Well, thanks guys. Thank you. Well, I appreciate y'all coming. Um, my number's up here on the, on the sheet. Um, if y'all have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, there's also lots of like YouTube things and I mean, you can even just Google. So I haven't really had a chance to like really look into this, but there is a way to like link it. I also don't know how much access I want to give AI to like my personal stuff. Um, but there is a way to link chat GPT to your Facebook Messenger, and then it will respond to your business page Facebook Messenger. Um, I have not messed with that. I don't know if I want to. That's what it started as, I think, before it was, even, yeah. before it was this. It started as a yeah. website bot. Yeah. Um, a chat bot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I also don't get enough traffic on my business page that I think I would need to like hook this up to it. Um, but that's something else you can do too. It's like, there's, um, if you just look up top ways for real estate agents to use chat GPT. So lead generation, capturing leads. Um, I use the KW website, so it doesn't really have like a chat feature on there. Um, but it gives more in depth things than I think I'm ready to take on. Um, but it even says like customer service, you know, it's like, I think at some point you remove yourself too much, if that makes sense. So, um, but I also think it depends on your online presence, right? Like if people are calling you directly, ChatGPT is not going to help you with customer service, um, which usually that's what you know, <coughs> happens. Is like people will call me directly. But yeah. So I just like asked it to create oh, an Instagram post for 9-11 since you said that and, and it had like it has like a nice caption and everything but at the bottom it like has a note that says remember to be sensitive and respectful when discussing tragic events like 9-11 use this opportunity to foster empathy unity and remembrance rather than dwelling on the negativity of the event that's obviously not something you would like put in the yeah. post but it's like a note to you I like that which I like and then it has like options to put in a personal story and then like an idea to like upload um, images. And it says consider the 9-11 Memorial or the American flag or a candlelit tribute. Love it. So did you ask it specifically for 
picture ideas or did it just prompt no i just said create instagram post for 9 11 and then it says like it gives you a title caption an image and then like suggestions and hashtags to mm -hmm. consider and then like another description you could put and then it says optional put in a personal story and then after that it has like the note to okay. be like really sensitive about cool topics i'm glad i did that too yeah so if you put in um an address and ask who is the owner who would give you the name that would be good that's like scary uh, what is the name of the owner you want to write probably right let's see because i'm heading to a phone number after that it does not have access to real-time information uh, okay it does not to what it says, I do not have access to real time information or databases that would allow me to determine the current owner of a specific property at a given address. Uh -huh. Then it gives you recommendations of where to go. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. And then we can just go to the tax records. Yeah, okay. public record. Uh -huh. Now, put in your name and put in what is Amanda's phone number? Uh -huh. First and last name, obviously. Ah. It is not appropriate or ethical to share personal information without okay. the individual's That's consent. That's pretty cool. Great. I like that. Uh -huh. Thank God. Yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, that would be like scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're asking, you have a property and you ask, you can't, well, it doesn't have a, can I give you information of the tax records? You will not go into the tax records. That's what it sounds like. Well, but what's interesting if you say, right, let's do a really vague listing description for Chapelway. So okay, you're gonna have so many ideas after this. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming on this yeah. week. So it doesn't look like it's pulling. It says. Desirable community of insert community name here. So yeah, it gives a very generic description of the address, like or a listing description with just an address. What about the specific name of a neighborhood? Would it give us description? You think? Right. Description. Please hand it that. Yeah. Here we go. Neighborhood. I spelled the British way. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got fancy over here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Both of these have Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. okay. It's, it's I feel like East Hampton, you know, East Hampton is better than this, but um, for it not to know anything about East Hampton, it knows its location, it's near the avenues, it's near the square, so 75, 285. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I feel like my neighborhood is in. They just it really well. They did? Okay, good. Yeah. I have a question regarding yeah. vendors. I'm okay. kind of going back to y'all's thing where you talked about maybe you could put in a vendor and a, if they offered a coupon or yeah. something. I know Kimberly told me that Keller Williams has a preferred list of vendors. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like, so is that someone that we have to use as someone from our preferred vendors list? Yeah. Or if, if I've got someone who's no, a really no, great no. painter, yeah. no, you can use or if you've got a really good HVAC person, yeah. I can. Yeah, you can use them. Yeah. Ever. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the vendors on our list, they have been vetted um, to be like solid. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't have somebody you already trust, they're a really great resource to use. Okay. Um, if you already have somebody you trust, use that person. Okay. Um, People that you know personally are more likely to give you referrals, so you should give them more business, in my opinion. I don't, that's not the opinion of Keller Williams East Cobb, that's not the opinion, the opinion of Keller Williams International, that is my opinion. Okay. Um, 
I work with people who will refer to me. I gotcha. Bye. Uh, yeah. So if if there's somebody that you know and you trust and you know they show up on time and, and you're willing to put your name on them and put your reputation on them, use them. Okay. If you don't have anybody, talk to our vendor list. Okay. They're great. They're all great. And if they're not great, they're not on the vendor list for very long. Shelly, make sure of it. Yes. <laughs> She's our ALC vendor. Oh, okay. Like, I'm the bad cop. Yeah. Okay. She is bad cop. Uh, so, no problem. We've had two complaints about you. <laughs> Where's the vendor list? You can ask him a little bit. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Last call. Oh, yeah. Last one, best one. Anybody have any more questions? You're amazing. Yes, thank you for doing that. You. you are so welcome. Thank, thank you guys you. for coming. I really appreciate your time. And um, I hope that's, you know, it's it's out. I know this is going to be love. Yeah. So I'm like watching TV and I'm going to just have my laptop and be like entering oh, stuff. And it's so fun to play with. Uh -huh. Yeah. I can see myself going down a rabbit hole of like, um, I learned it from my daughter. Um, I learned it from my daughter, oh, did you? and I literally have to go back and check all, all what she's doing now yeah. because the work that they put in and things like that is not happening. That is like, like pretty scary for the. It is. I have to disable it from the laptop. Uh -huh. So not only the um, teachers have to do it's I'll like an extra this. job yes. for them. There are some the, some AI writing thing that you can pay for. I think it's either thirty or sixty dollars a month, something like that. That would there's no plagiarism that guarantee. Yeah. Uh huh. So if you can afford that as a student, <laughs> meaning that no, say it again. So they oh. can't detect. It's not plagiarism. Oh, oh, they're not plagiarizing. They guarantee it. So. I guess they just. What's our world coming? Oh yes. That's okay. I'll swing by. And I think I have any questions. Okay. No, I gotta make some time. Let you know thoughts and stuff right. here if you get any. You're welcome. Going by their yeah, card. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you guys for coming. You know, I think we're all sure that they're ready. It's so funny it comes in. So people like oh, because I'm really bad at writing to Instagram. Oh. You sold my house. You I hate know, posting I, on I, social I, media. I don't know. Like, uh, <laughs> it's not a friend. No, I don't know what happened. But somehow, I thought I was a girl in the front now. Yeah, I signed up for something. Oh, that's good. Let's push it. That was so nice. Now it's rotating. So. Um.